What does it take to be the greatest defense ever? Does it take future NFL talent everywhere led by a legendary Hall of Famer? Does it take college football's greatest dynasty dominating at the peak of its powers? Or is there still room for a new group to rewrite history? Tough, fast, strong, powerful, explosive, and everywhere all at once. The 2021 Georgia Bulldogs vied to become that best ever, and they very well might have done it. After winning the national championship, holding Alabama and Heisman Trophy winner Bryce Young to just 18 points, their defense didn't just win this year, they might have immortalized themselves in time. They led the nation averaging just 10 points per game allowed, yards per play with just 4.2, Against Power 5 teams, their 10.5 points allowed per game was best ever, and their .7 points per drive was the lowest figure in the playoff era. While their main nucleus was dominant with Jordan Davis, N'Kobe Dean, Trayvon Walker, and Lewis Seen, to name a few, it's certainly possible all 11 of their starters will eventually be drafted into the NFL. They were great, but to determine if they were the greatest, we'll break that down into three different categories disruptiveness, coaching slash scheme, and mismatch wins. But before we deep dive in there, I want to thank my good friends at Built Bar for sponsoring this week's episode. Built Bar has done it. They've always been about creating a healthy, protein-packed energy bar that also doubles as a delicious, smooth-as-hell candy bar, and like some of you told me, they've done it. Each bar has just 130 calories, 6 grams of fiber, and 17 grams of protein. Plus, it's gluten-free, there's no preservatives, it's keto-friendly, and more. And taste-wise, like crazy good. They've got 18 super unique flavors that taste basically like candy bars, and their smooth, rich, chocolate-filled flavor explosions keep your hunger satisfied for hours. As a lot of you know, I've been a fan of the coconut and definitely the salted caramel, but when you get a mix box like I did, you can try a bunch of different flavors, which are all really good. To check them out, Built Bar ships boxes right to your doorstep, and when you order, you can get that mix box just like I did, customize a box to get exactly what you want, or you can order just one flavor. To get 10% off any order, just use my coupon code ALEXNFL10. So getting back to Georgia, we'll start by looking at the overall entirety of this defense and then begin drilling down on our three main categories. The dogs, as cliche as this sounds, have crazy power and crazy speed. They play teams like Michigan, who tried to pound the rock and beat them up with power schemes inside, but Georgia's defensive line is immovable like stone and bent their guys backwards. And they played teams like Clemson, who saw that power, so they tried to get outside that front with speed, screens, misdirection, things like that. But Georgia's linebackers and DBs are faster than anything you've seen before and chase down anyone on sight. While there's talent up and down the roster, their dominance really begins with the defensive front. If you single block them one-on-one, -on -one, good luck. And there's no promising that double teams will do you any better. When looking at our first category, disruptiveness, this dominating front, paired with the extremely aggressive nature with which they deployed their linebackers, especially N'Kobe Dean, was what set them apart. For starters, their run defense was unbelievable, allowing just two and a half yards per rush, second in the nation. They never gave up a run of more than 20, and a big part of that was all the movement they created up front with Dean and Co. flying up the middle to blow everything up. So here, even though they have a traditional four-man front, they actually turn it into what ends up being essentially a six-man front at the snap. Clemson has a great call against what appears to be their four down front, tight zone weak lock, where these two will block the down lineman and combo up to Quay Walker, and these two will block this lineman, then combo up to Dean. But as the play is starting, Walker and Dean blitz the run, creating that pseudo six-man front, meaning there are no more double teams and nowhere for the running back to go. The dogs were extremely disruptive and had their linebackers rush a lot, but that doesn't actually mean they blitzed a lot, because in reality they blitzed at one of the lowest rates in the Kirby Smart era. A blitz is defined as five or more defenders rushing the passer, but rushing a fifth defender leaves you vulnerable in coverage. To create disruption while keeping their coverage strong, Georgia utilized creeper pressures more than anybody. A creeper rushes a second-level defender like a linebacker or defensive back, but still only brings four, so a D-lineman has to drop. 
Georgia felt comfortable calling these less risky pressures on first and second down since they still had good numbers and coverage behind them. And even against the most common, arguably most challenging play to stop, which is mesh, with this wheel route and these two underneath shallow crossers, you can see nobody is open and they still get a free runner at the quarterback since they're not just rushing the traditional four down lineman. Sometimes they'd scheme open that free runner by overloading one side of the formation pre-snap, then bring a defender from the other, and if you're a quarterback and you see a free runner with seven in coverage behind him, you are not happy. Bama loves using just five-man protection, and basically wherever the center slides is where the offense is saying, that's where we need help, or that's where we think pressure is coming. Georgia puts five over here and just two over here, so of course Bama slides this way, but nobody's accounting for Quay Walker. The key to this play is that everybody is coached to do their job, which takes us right into our second category, coaching and scheme. Nolan Smith is coached to loop inside to the B-gap to grab the attention of the left tackle. We can't just have two guys rushing into the same gap. And Trayvon Walker isn't coached to just rush upfield towards the quarterback, but to contain rush, which means when Bryce Young starts bailing to his right to get away from the free runner, Walker will be waiting to give him a mouthful of Rydell. From a coaching perspective, Smart knew his defensive line was his bread and butter, so he figured he could back off with the blitzing and let the big boys do the work. This allowed him to play a lot of two high coverages where his safeties could bracket the inside receivers, so basically the only one-on-ones were outside where the corners would play inside leverage, which is basically saying we dare you to target the ISO matchup because that means you have to throw it outside and along the sideline, aka the furthest most difficult pass to complete, go ahead. It was also apparent that Smart's defense was always extremely well prepared for anything they were going to see. They always had checks for everything and were communicating at all times. And if they'd seen something a game or a couple of games before, they were going to be ready. In the SEC championship, right before the college playoffs, Bama ran one of their go-to concepts to try and isolate the slot defender. Using an empty formation, they put a running back outside, and depending on which position matches him defensively, that tells the quarterback pre-snap if it's man or zone. With N'Kobe Dean, who we know is a linebacker outside on him, and then the corner Keeley Ringo on the slot, it's pretty clear this is man coverage. The concept is a curl at the bottom to hold Dean and get the fade match one-on-one, -on -one, which Bryce Young just narrowly misses. Fast forward a couple of weeks to the national championship, and Kirby Smart knows they're probably going to see that slot fade again. Again out of empty, they now put a tight end outside, which just like the running back helps give him a man zone indicator. And with safety Christopher Smith on him, and the corner William Poole bumped inside, this once again tells Young it's man coverage, time to throw the fade. But Smart has coached his guys up knowing this curl, especially to a non-wide receiver, almost never gets thrown, and watch Smith's eyes switch back to Young when he sees the tight end chop down, then flies over the top with great anticipation. Jordan Davis called this unit the no-name defense, and that's thanks to Smart's coaching, especially in how they fit the run, where each defender has to work in perfect harmony, instead of one guy going mission impossible and doing his own thing. When playing with two high safeties instead of one, the defense has to be perfect since they're undermanned in the box. So here with just six defenders for six blockers, plus Bryce Young can run, Georgia has to be flawless. Instead of one gapping where each guy could fly into a gap and basically try and do it all by themselves, they have to two gap, which is less aggressive and makes it to where you hit your man, try and control him, but don't go upfield. Since Bama is running split zone with the tight end kicking out the end man over here, this makes N'Kobe Dean's job really, really hard. Since Robert Beal is boxing the front, meaning he's hitting the outside shoulder of the tight end, he's doing that to force the run back inside to Dean. Dean has to account for this gap, but also account for Bryce Young if Young does in fact keep the ball if nobody's on the edge. Dean has to kinda play over the top until he sees Young give the ball, then jump back inside to fit this gap. If it wasn't for the rest of the D-line doing their job and holding their position, plus Beal 2, the backside of this run would be wide open, but Georgia shuts the door. The last category that I look for is mismatch wins, which is what in my opinion sets good defenses apart from great ones. When the numbers on the field are dictating that you should lose, you find a way to go out and win. Winning with numbers in space was a main part of Clemson's game plan, where what they were basically trying to do is say, okay, 
Y'all want to show us all this pressure inside with your backers. We're going to put three outside, run a screen, have these two block these two, and force your slower linebacker to tackle our receiver in space, or have your safety make a tackle from 15 yards away. But as I said, when teams tried to beat them with power, they'd lose. And when teams tried to beat them with speed, even linebackers on receivers, they'd lose that too. An even more extreme example is when Clemson tried it again, where here they have an even bigger advantage. Three receivers outside, one's a tight end, and Georgia again has just two, but this time the slot is blitzing. One on three is not good, but Georgia's just too fast, too strong, and too furious to where they make this look like a walk in the park. Even when you have them right where you want them, they still win, and that's the sign of a great defense. Are they the greatest defense, though, is the question. The 2011 Alabama team has been the all-time gold standard of college defense, and believe it or not, they were also coached by Kirby Smart. While that 2011 Bama team leads in some major categories that would still put them as the best ever, I still believe this Georgia defense was the greatest we've ever seen. My friends at Football Outsiders, opponent adjusted overall defensive efficiency metric would agree. I'll link it in the description. And the fact that Smart coached that Bama team in 2011 just beat this year's Bama team, a dynasty, to win the Natty, plus Georgia had to deal with the modern spread offense, RPOs, QBs being better than ever, all of that puts them over the top. This is the most disruptive defense ever assembled in college football. They have the coach who's orchestrated the number one and number two defenses of all time. And what sets this Georgia defense apart is that when everything is stacked against them, they still win and win big. The 2021 Georgia Bulldogs gave us the greatest defensive season we've ever seen. Compared to every other defense in college football history, this one will stand the test of time. Let's <laughs> go.